You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for your support of The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Recently, we shared a wonderful story of great church musician Praetorius, Michael Praetorius, with uh, Chaplain Denzer here, and he referenced a more recent church musician, uh, Dr. Carl Schalk, and uh, the Lord in his infinite wisdom recently called Dr. Schalk to his home, to his eternal home, and we wanted to share the story of Dr. Carl Schalk with you today and remembering the great gift that he is has been to the church, giving thanks to God for this good gift. And so we have wonderful guests with us today to to remember and give thanks to God for Dr. Carl Schock. Joining us today, Dr. Mark Bender. He's Minister of Music at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in De Pere, Missouri. Dr. Bender, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Uh, Good morning, Andy, Sarah, John. (laughs) Also joining us today, the Reverend Dr. John Veeker, a senior assistant to the president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Dr. Vicker, thanks for joining us on the Coffee Hour. Thank you. Always great to be here. So Dr. Vicker and Dr. Bender, both uh, just wonderful church musicians, uh, also very knowledgeable of uh, church music history. And so we'll start with Dr. Vicker. Can you share with us who is Dr. Carl Schalk? Carl Schalk was the dean of Lutheran church music. I think you could say that pretty fairly. There are others that may rise to that level, but he, at least for the 20th century, he, his life and times and, and the work that he did bespoke that kind of honor. He was the distinguished professor of music emeritus at Concordia University, Chicago from 1965 to 1994 when he retired, which were, was where he taught um, church music uh, to dozens and hundreds of music majors and church musicians today who are out serving the Lord and serving congregations with music. He wrote hundreds of choral settings and arrangements, dozens of books. He composed over 120 hymn melodies and carols, which have appeared in 30 denominational hymnals. I mean, he's just outside of Lutheranism also. He's widely known. So uh, Carl Schock was a great man and a great church musician. And um, and all of us who um, serve today, either as pastors or church musicians, um, you know, stand on the shoulders of, of his work. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us more about his own formation as a church musician? His his legacy is just so immense, but what about his own formation? It's very interesting. He he grew up in a rather inauspicious teacher's home in De Plain, Illinois, Uh, doing the typical things that boys in that time would be doing, that is going to church with his teacher parents and singing in the children's choir. I learned from Stephen Wente's a biography in the Festschrift that they produced for Carl uh, 20, 20 years ago or so, um, that until he was 15, he hadn't really decided that he was interested in music. Wow. And it was when he got to Concordia High School, which was the feeder school into Concordia River Forest, that he got turned on to church music by his teacher, Hildner. And from there, um, you know, did his degree in church music at Concordia River Forest and was called to Zion Wausau in uh, was Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau where he served there for a number of years and uh, did a master's degree in music theory at Eastman School of Music, which is no small shakes and uh, and took it from there. So he was he was formed out of the crucible of uh, of the Lutheran ethos in the 1930s and 40s and uh, went through the system, so to speak, and became um, trained and and facilitated as a professor. And where did he go then after his training? Where did he become a professor then? Yeah, he went to Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau, Wisconsin, and served there, had a number of choirs. He had married his high uh, high school and college sweetheart, um, Noel, and... um, then he went from from that church in 1965 to become the 
choir director for the Lutheran Hour, uh, the director of music for the Lutheran Hour here in St. Louis. And he served he served there for a number of years. Um, I guess it was for, what uh, help me out here, uh, Mark. What year did he go to? I think I think he left Wausau in fifty eight. Left Wausau in fifty eight right. and and served till sixty five. I'm sorry, uh, till sixty five here in the Lutheran Hour, which is amazing that the Lutheran Hour had a director of music to provide live music uh, with choirs and all of that sort of thing in the nineteen sixties. And then he left from St. Louis uh, and the Lutheran Hour to teach at Concordia River Forest in nineteen sixty five and served there until he retired in December of nineteen ninety three. And from then on, he continued to write and to write books and compose, and and uh, there was no slowing him down. <laughs> so at Concordia College, River Forest, that's where, Mark, your path crossed with Dr. Carl Schalk, correct? That's correct. <clears throat> so tell uh, us about your studies with Dr. Schalk. What were, what were your plans in studying at Concordia in River Forest? Well, I met Carl Schalk in the summer of 1969. Uh, they, Concordia was offering a, a summer program, what I think eventually became the, the predecessor of Lutheran Summer Music. And uh, so there were uh, 36 uh, high school students between the junior and senior year. Music people uh, were brought there for five weeks. And so we were involved with Carl Schalk and Richard Hillert and Paul Bungus and others like that. <clears throat> uh, it, during that time, uh, we studied organ, choir. Uh, we had daily chapel. In fact, uh, during that time we were there, we celebrated or observed the 439th anniversary of the presentation of the Augsburg Confession. <laughs> the what? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> right. But... See, this is part of that formation and part of that being made aware of the of the of the history of the Lutheran Church too. That we did that, and so we we sang period music uh, for that particular service. Uh, my plans had been to graduate from high school and go to Valpro for four years, and then matriculate to Concordia Seminary, because I had this conflict, and I think others have too. Uh, between uh, an interest in church music and also the pastoral ministry. But it was that time at, uh, in River Forest in 1969 that I, just, I saw uh, some, many of the other students, they were going to go on and become Lutheran teachers, and they had music interest. And, and you could proclaim the gospel from the other end of the nave, from the balcony. And so I returned uh, after that and... Uh, and also picked up my previous aspiration to become a Lutheran elementary school teacher. And I might add, by the way, I'm, I met the young lady who, was, who became my wife during that summer, too, at, uh, at step one. Well, so that was definitely worth it. Then. It was definitely <laughs> worth it. And so over, that, <clears throat> over our senior year, things must have uh, incubated that unawares to both of us until we, we came back for freshman year and in uh, college. <laughs> I'm sure there's there's lots of stories from music camp. I know music camp has been such a, a great blessing for so many people that have gone through Concordia Chicago uh, for music camps and, and studying under and the list of, of musicians that you listed that you were able to study under for uh, this music camp is incredible. It is such a, a, a huge amount of, of musical knowledge and legacy in, in the Lutheran church. How did Dr. Schalk challenge you in your uh, music formation? Uh, well, among other things, uh, he had developed, which was part of his, his uh, directions coming to River Forest, <clears throat> one of which was to develop a some kind of a journal, a periodical. And so he developed what it was then became known as church music, which was, uh, for the most part of its, its, its time of publication, was a, a twice-a-year issue. And there would be times when he would uh, send me new choral music to, uh, to give some kind of an evaluation, write a little critique. Uh, one time he even had me... Uh, write a feature article uh, right around the time of the, bicent the our nation's bicentennial, and that was published. 
Other occasions, he would say, "We need a hymn concertato on for this on this particular hymn for this particular Sunday in the church here." Um, I would say then there were other little encouragement things like uh, buy a book and say, "Ask him, would you autograph this or sign this for me?" And he would he would have these kind of greetings like student, college, uh, colleague, friend. Uh, my favorite one is co-conspirator in the cause of excellent church music. <laughs> uh, the, so you pick up on some of that, just his his wit, and uh, mm-hmm. he was extremely well-read and in tune with current events, not only in the church, but in the nation and in the world. Uh, one of the things he often would tell us was that we needed to do things in a winsome way. Mm-hmm. And I think that really described his approach to a lot of things in which he could um, communicate with people, even if they didn't necessarily agree with him, but he did it in a way that was was encouraging and friendly, uh, and again winsome. Do you have? We have about a minute left before we need to take a quick break. Is there a memorable story that comes to mind of your days as a student with Dr. Shock? Yes, real quickly. Um, <clears throat> the uh, I had played organ here in St. Louis for two two years, my junior and senior year, and I decided that when I went to River Forest, I wasn't going to get an organ job right away. So I had been there, we had been there a couple of weeks, and I passed Carl in the hallway, and he handed me a business card, and he said, here, I told this pastor you'd call him. And <laughs> <clears throat> well, I wasn't really excited about it, but I did, I did call him. Short of it is that uh, he was the pastor at Faith Lutheran Church in Westchester, Illinois, a real small little church. Um, he was Carl Schalk's brother-in-law. <laughs> uh, but it was, a, it was a great thing. Uh, and the woman who became my wife, ultimately, we, we served there for four years that we were in college. Just an excellent opportunity to, to grow uh, and uh, yet at the same time have the professors and so forth nearby. So you can make some of those mistakes as a as a college student yet that some of us didn't others wouldn't get a chance to make until they got in their first parish. <laughs> We're remembering and giving thanks to God for Dr. Carl Schock, great church musician. We're talking with Reverend Dr. John Veeker and Dr. Mark Bender. We have more to share with you on the coffee hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're remembering and giving thanks to God for the great church musician, Dr. Carl Schalk. Today we're talking with Reverend Dr. John Veeker and Dr. Mark Bender. Dr. Bender was a student of Dr. Carl Schalk. And uh, before we went to break, you were sharing with us, Mark, a, a great story of, uh, of being a student of Dr. Schalk. How would you say he influenced you as a church musician? By what he did on campus in terms of the chapel choir, which was the the choir which sang twice a week in chapel and oftentimes uh, was really the training choir for, for church for church musicians. The music that he chose, the music that he wrote for that that group were the kinds of things that uh, kinds of pieces that gave us a sense of what a, a, a parish choir could could manage. Uh, I remember one class I took in the master's program. Uh, one day, maybe more than one day, we were. He would just have us sing hymns, and I got this. I thought to myself, "Why am I paying tuition to to sing hymns in class? I mean, are, are we supposed to learn something here?" Well, the point is, is the fact that it was the communal singing of those hymns. 
and be in that class with my fellow students, you know, that really did its work. And uh, I wouldn't have had the same effect if I'd have done it on my, on my own. Mm-hmm. His writings, as John already alluded to, are also things that have been encouraging over decades of, of service. Uh, uh, he, was, he was one who um, had a good idea of, because of his training and his study, uh, how to, how to uh, navigate the waters of the past few decades, worship wars and other things like that, which were often uh, turbulent times for us. And so he, he was a rudder which helped us uh, uh, find our way through there. Mm-hmm. I might add, too, you know, it, it, it was those writings that was most influential for me, especially his little monograph on the history of uh, the roots of, Ger- of German hymnody in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And when I was working on my uh, STM thesis in the late 80s, I, I, he was coming to town and I, I told him what I, I sent him a note what I was working on. And he said, hey, please, I'll be down at the Missouri Athletic Club. Please come down and I'd love to see what you're doing. He was a huge encourager. And, um, and he, the, what was so valuable about that study is it, he kind of got at our family story um, for the Missouri Synod. Where did, where did our hymnody come from? Where did these hymnals come from? And uh, it, it was just uh, so wonderful to, be, to hear him and to, um, and to be encouraged by him. Mm-hmm. I doubt that he had a membership at the Missouri Athletic no. Club. I, I think he, <laughs> no, he did not. It was a nice place to stay. That's I don't he, remember I think, him as being that athletic. I think he was in for a, a MEAC meeting. <laughs> right. You know, you know, Andy, there, there was one thing that he pulled this on me several times that we would, we would walk up to him and greet him. He'd say, Hey, that's a nice looking coat, you know, and then you'd say, okay, well, thank you very much. Too bad they, they didn't have it in your size. <laughs> and uh, it was just those kind of sharp little witty things too. I want to say one other thing real quickly uh, in terms of formation. Uh, in 1971, he and Paul Bowman uh, initiated uh, the Bach Cantata series at Grace River Forest. The first uh, cantata was 19... Uh, as a hoop uh, I was I was a sophomore and had the privilege of singing in that very first one, mm. and it, we, it's to celebrate Saint Michael and all angels. What? Saint Michael and all angels. See again, expanding our understanding of the church year and and all of those things. And just as a side note, uh, Grace River Forest. This is their fiftieth season now for these uh, this series of uh, cantatas. So opened up that whole rich heritage of, uh, of music, too. Mm-hmm. During my days at, at Concordia Chicago, uh, much later than 1993, there was still this, this legacy of shock that, that we in uh, both Scola and Capella just uh, loved. And every year we got to sing Noel at the uh, Lessons oh, yeah. oh, yeah. and Carols. And, and we always shared, uh, you know, this, this story about his love for his wife, Noel. And, and it was just so, so wonderful. And every time we would sing something from shock, we're like, oh, yeah, that sounds like shock. So, John, what made his music unique? What made his music very shock-like? I've thought about that a, a bit. Well, I think the first piece is he was so grounded in the tradition that he knew he had an incredible musical vocabulary. I mean, music is a language, and you can use big words, you can use little words. Mm-hmm. It's in how you arrange them, um, how it's crafted. So he knew the tradition. Um, he tended to write music that was accessible for the smaller choir. He directed for many years the chapel choir, and that's where he would – this was the – choir of um, less talented or they, they weren't the music majors so much, but they sang for chapel and uh, they were kind of like a church choir. And he tried out his new stuff for them, with them. And uh, so he wrote in, in a way that smaller church choirs could use his material. And then finally, you know, his background with his his, um, his master's in church, master's in music theory from Eastman, you know, the musical vocabulary he was not afraid to use um, <clears throat> uh, harmonic language that, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't atonal, it wasn't uh, uh, weird stuff, but it was rich. He, had, like I say, had a rich vocabulary, and he crafted his music very well. 
I want to just add too. You mentioned his uh, his uh, master of music, but uh, while he was at uh, Lutheran Ministry, he also earned a master of arts in religion from the seminary, which yes. grounded him in the theology and uh, put him in good stead. He could speak on equal terms with church musicians and with clergy. Yes, and had the respect of both. Mm -hmm. How has his music served? the church at large. You've talked about all of these these hymns and, and settings that are for church choirs, smaller church choirs. What has that, that impact been uh, over the last several years and decades of this church music that has now influenced the wider Lutheran church? I think if you go to Concordia Publishing House and you just type in the word shock, S-C-H-A-L-K, <laughs> under search, you will see. Uh, the influence, <laughs> how many, and those are those are just the ones that are still in print. It's amazing how much, uh, how many, uh, how many choral pieces, uh, not to mention hymn melodies. I think there are five or six that are in Lutheran service book, uh, and um, and his influence, and also on church musicians, having ta taught them and taught the teachers who have taught them, and the pastors who have who have also um, influenced church musicians. In fact, uh, uh, Concordia Publishing House just published late last year, uh, One and All Rejoice, a children's mm -hmm. hymnal, and Carl Schalk is represented in there six times. Mm -hmm. The music that he wrote was often very, in his term, accessible. Uh, he did his Crown Choir series uh, of music uh, were largely unison and two-part mixed. Uh, oftentimes there was a stanza which was treated it, like a canon. He would kind of develop a round out of the melody. Uh, and they're all beautiful, they're beautiful settings. And in this time of reduced size of choirs for various reasons, inclu including now even COVID, much of this music that he wrote for uh, smaller groups like that in terms of their number of singers still find a welcome home in, in our liturgies today and can still be used. What are, uh, real briefly, what are some of those selections that maybe our listeners might be familiar with, but maybe don't realize that they're um, shock pieces? Mark? Oh, thine the amen, thine the praise. Mm -hmm. That's probably his most famous melody. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, mm -hmm. Another one, Sing My Tongue, The Glorious Battle. That and a number of others were came out during the 60s in a magazine uh, put out by the Synod's Youth uh, Department called Spirit Magazine. In fact, uh, yours truly was on the, on the cover of one issue, but uh, <laughs> we won't go into that today. <clears throat> I know that, uh, Mark, you have a, some, something you'd like to share with us from one of the, uh, the pieces, uh, one of the resources uh, about Dr. Schalk. Before we do that, um, John, are there any resources you'd like to point us to uh, before Mark shares one excerpt for us? Well, there are three little volumes. I think uh, the first is Carl Schalk, A Life in Song, published by Concordia Publishing House by Nancy Robbie. That's a superb kind of um, bio and his influence on church music. Then a less available, Thine the Amen Essays on Lutheran Church Music, which was a festschrift. And then finally, Singing the Church's Song uh, by Carl Schock and Essays in Occasional Writing. So those are just short little pieces. And I think uh, Mark would also, First Person Singular is another great little collection, which is Vintage Carl. And then there's another sequel called More First Person Singular. Great stuff. And Mark, I know you have a quote that you'd like to share with us today. Uh, What's the uh, what's the resource? The resource is uh, one of the books that John just cited, Thine the Amen, uh, Essays on Lutheran Church Music in Honor of Carl Schalk. This was, uh, there was a biography written by his colleague and former student, Stephen Wente. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is the a paragraph that closes that section of the biography, which I think captures uh, the essence of Carl Schalk and, and uh, very well. Uh, now, Wente is, of course, writing it while Carl's still alive, so the, the it'll be present tense, but uh, Wente writes these words. Throughout his life, Carl F. Schock has devoted himself to pointing Lutheranism, and indeed all Christians, to the Church's continuing heritage of music and worship. He has done so with eloquence, 
and with grace. He is a supremely gifted, creative, uh, and servant of God and of the church. But perhaps the truest evaluation of Carl's character is to say that all of his activities derive from his firmly grounded understanding of music in the life of the church, which Carl has so faithfully espoused. Carl Schock has indeed lived a focused life that has enriched and inspired the church, its pastors, teachers, and musicians, and thereby helped all to proclaim the gospel in music. Amen. Dr. Mark Bender, Minister of Music, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, De Pair. Mark, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. My pleasure. What an honor to talk about this man. Amen. The Reverend Dr. John Beaker, Senior Assistant to the President, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. John, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. And thank you for picking this topic in person. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.